to go with this, what I'm going to call this little thing is the revolution of the natural rights of man, which I think is some of the, today with history or, or schooling or whatever, we don't actually get the correct reasons for the revolution of the United States of America, well, more than, the revolution of the colonists, the American colonists against the British government. And I'll start with this. Whenever legislators endeavor to take away and destroy property or the people, destroy the property of the people, or to reduce them to slavery under arbitrary power, they put themselves into a state of war with the people, who are thereupon absolved from any further obedience, and are left to the common refuge which God has provided for all men against force and, force and violence. These are the words from John Locke from his second treatise on civil government. And it rocked the Western world at the time. It was in the late 1600s, 1670 or 80s, something like that. At the same time, we had uh, Algernon Sidney, who was in England, talking about the same thing. And what it was was that man has a natural right to his property. And in property, they didn't mean like the land that you went and bought or your house is sitting on. Your property is yourself. You have unalienable rights to yourself. A man's rights and liberty did not come from government, but preceded government and supersedes government. Man only created government at the time, or even now, with a specific intent to protect that person's rights and properties. Locke's, the difference with Locke was he suggested that the king, all of Europe was ruled by kings at the time, he suggested that the king's supposed right to rule was not a divine right, but his right was only to rule at the consent of the people that he governed. Locke's biggest thing, besides introducing the Western world to the theory of private property, was that he said not only do does man create government to protect his property and rights, he also has the right and duty to dissolve and abolish any government that goes beyond the bounds that it was set up for. I mean, that only makes sense. If you hire somebody to do something, they go beyond the bounds of what they're set up for, you, you get rid of them, abolish it, cut the contract. The 17th and 18th centuries, especially in America, were really fertile times for the theory of natural rights of man. Before that, I don't know, like I said, everything, man didn't have rights. You had kings, you had rulers, they were set up by God. You did whatever they said because if you didn't, why, you were disobeying God himself. But the thoughts that man had unalienable rights, regardless of what his government was or who his government was, and that he had the right to abolish it when it abused those rights, was a new theory that really sprang up, especially in the American colonies. It just, because we had in the American colonies freedom. They didn't have, their king was three, four thousand miles away. You lived out in your boonies or whatever. You lived in Delta and you didn't have the government smashing down on you all the time. So you kind of lived in pretty good freedom. And during that time, they started to think, why do we need rulers? Why do we need people telling us what to do? Why do we need people telling